never seen a lame man walk Never heard a dumb man talk Never seen a blind man see I promise you a pain is Never seen a cancer death Never seen all the poor get fed Never seen a prisoner set free I promise you a change is Hey everybody! <laughs> See you little Garth Brooks right here because everybody in Arkansas is Garth Brooks crazy. He went to Razorback Stadium and he rocked it out. I wasn't there, but I feel like I was. I'm gonna say I was because 80,000 people, everybody else in Arkansas was there. And I watched the videos on Facebook. So what a great concert, Clint. I'm in for Bigger T coming at you in living color down here in South Arkansas, in beautiful South Arkansas. And uh, as always, I'm with my man, Clint Big C. Are you with me? I am with you. I'm always with you, baby. Every week, sometimes twice a week. Sometimes we just interview somebody because we feel like interviewing somebody. And sometimes um, we talk about other things. Yeah, we talk about other things. Last, last week we had baseball bow on. Like, or we just we'll, we'll just call each other and talk fine art. We will. We did. We we um Michelangelo's paintings. Yeah, about about some kind of big estate auction going on. <laughs> we'll talk. We'll talk that. Um. Yeah. Right now, we're in a bidding war on eBay for a polygraph machine. Uh, <laughs> that's right, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I've got a few questions I want to ask Robert Branscombe. That's right. Hey, man, speaking of our sponsor, sort of, he's bought us meals. That made us probably... Uh, he's, our he's our friend. He's friend, so... He's our buddy. Yeah. Now, he, he did some... He, he put a roof on for you. Did put a roof on for me. Did he do a fine job? Man, it looks phenomenal. It it, it really sucks that it's happened as I'm moving out of the house. Yeah, well, I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's like I moved out, and so now I'm got me. The new yeah, owners get to roof, new owners. The new right. owners get to enjoy hometown roofing's hard yeah. work. Robert Branson's hard work. Um, and hometown roofing took care of you. They did, and, and just phenomenal care. Robert came by. Dude, they worked fast. They worked clean. Um, it looks, it looks phenomenal. So I can say, I can say he's. I bought a roof from Home Down Roofing, and they did a phenomenal job. That's right. So call them for all your roofing needs. All your roofing needs, and also if for your HVAC, call Ronnie Crystal. Ronnie Crystal. Ronnie Crystal. Ronnie Crystal. Every you know, because you know Ronnie Crystal, uh, Genesis. Uh, Heating and cooling and refrigerator. I think Genesis is refrigerating. They always mispronounced his name wrong on the speaker. Yeah, yeah. Like, this is a guy we played football with. Football with in high school. And they were like, Ronnie Crystal on the tackle. Ronnie Crystal on the tackle. And you did the same thing to Draven Morrow last week. I sure did. And And I'm sorry. And it's like, yeah, because you were talking about how bad you felt before we went on there. And he actually, he sent me a voicemail. The voice message because he doesn't like to this text. was the guy that Clint wrestled that we showed the video. Great, great dude. Terrific worker. Terrific, terrific worker. Took good care of your boy, um, even though he kicked him in the face. Um <laughs> and left two handprints on my on my massive chest. Oh man. Sculpted the chest. He left handprints on there. Never mind. Uh, other than that, great, great guy. Yeah. Um but yeah, Draven Morrow. Well, if he forgives me for butchering his name, he's, he's got to be a great guy. Yeah. I, I kept calling him Raven. Raven. Raven sounds good too, but well, there's already a wrestler with that gimmick. There he is. And that and that's called Raven. That probably makes it even worse that I called him that. 
Anyway, <laughs> you're like, oh, there's Brutus the Barber Beefcake getting kicked by Draven Moro. Yeah, like, I've been your friend for four for 35 years, man. <laughs> well, on, you man. know, um, talking about those PA announcers with Ronnie Crystal. Running. I did PA for a couple of years for Camden the last couple, you know, the last couple of years. And I struggled with some names. Yeah. And there was some I embarrassingly got wrong. Once I sat was able to sit and look at them, I was like, oh wait. Ooh. <laughs> I said I was way off. I was as Brian Regan would say, I was using numbers and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, it is. <laughs> but anyway, how's your week been, man? What have you been up to? Man, you know, I guess this was a tame week compared to, you know, wrestling a match and then being at WrestleMania before that. Uh, so, yeah, it was just – it was a good, chill week. I've had a good week. No complaints. I, I have started a new diet. Ooh. I have. So, Ooh. that's – Now, you're doing the – we talked about it before, but you're doing the, the high-protein. Right. Low carb. You, and, you know, I have that one guy, and you know me. I don't listen to a lot of people. I just don't because I am the way I am. I don't know why, but I most time people. Voice. Yeah, Pete. I love. There's <laughs> nothing. That's why I interrupt you all the time because I love. I love your voice, Travis. You're one of the guys I'll listen to, but I love the sound of my own voice. <laughs> <laughs> but so I got I, my buddy DJ Crane wrote me a diet. Um, I said, man, you know what you tell me to do, I'll do it. So it's, it's just, you know, just about being the best me I can be. I feel like I'm uh, already awesome, so. The only problem is DJ's got genetics that we don't have. No, DJ's, <laughs> DJ's a, he, he's an athletic freak. Yeah. Um, he, he's he is. genetically gifted. Yeah, well, his dad played in the NFL. His dad played well, with, yeah. His dad played with Mike Holmgren. Yeah. So. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to guess, um. If you got his family reunion together and my family re reunion together and put them in a 100-meter race, they're going to win. You know, I stole <laughs> this joke from Mark Grace on the Jim Rome show, and my goodness, I've got some mileage out of it. Because one of the things I do brag about, I played four years of football at Arkansas Tech. Four years, count them, one, two, three, four. Um, they're like, you can come back for your for your fifth year. I'm like, no, nah, why? So I can stand here? Um, I'm good. <laughs> um, but, um, no, but I remember saying I was the slowest player on Arkansas Tech's football team four years, all four years, the slowest guy. Like I worked really hard, lost a bunch of weight. Guess what? I was still slow. <laughs> um, if I'm, I know if I'm racing a pregnant woman, I'd come in third. That's right. Place. Do the math, people. Heard that joke. You know. twins, I come <laughs> fourth. We didn't even get a medal. That's right. <laughs> But I stole that from Mark Grace on the Jim Rome show, and I've used the crap out of it. I mean, that, that I've worn that joke out. There's no tread left on the tires. And you know what? I'm going to keep using it till the blow, blows out. Mark on Grace, one of the best interviews ever. By oh, way. yeah. Yeah, he, he was. Now, now Clint, uh, we, we got our – each week we try to do a holy shnikes moment, and there's one. It's a viral video that everybody's seen by now. Uh, this one – Ain't as obvious as you know some others have been, but it you had to imagine we were going to talk about it. Oh, I do. I saw this. I'm like, that's our holy schnikes moment right there. Yeah. So it was at Texas uh, junior, junior college. Yeah, I think it was junior college or junior something. College. Uh, a guy hits a home run, and I don't know what he says to the pitcher or what he do, has done to the pitcher. But whatever, that pitcher didn't like it. Yeah. And he gets around third base. And he goes straight water boy. Dude, it was bad. He's, he's like, don't you talk about my mama. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it, was, it was that level of a hit. There's linebackers that don't. I'm like, look, I know this guy just kicked off the baseball team, but if y'all got a football team, you got you a strong safety That's linebacker right. or something. Uh, and I, I think they need to they need to get him and that cop that tackled uh, Baker Mayfield in Fayetteville. Yeah, and put them on the same team somewhere, like oh, some semi pro team. Poor Baker, man. <laughs> I still feel sorry for Baker Mayfield. Oh, that was horrible. Oh, yeah. that was horrible. Yeah, it was bad. Yeah. And watching his head bounce off that um, that concrete wall there. Good thing he was inebriated. He didn't feel it too Ooh, bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> but no, this pitcher, he is no longer on the baseball team. Yeah. And I don't know. I don't know what was I don't know what was said or what was done. I don't. Yeah, you, you about have to get rid of him for that. That's that's but outside the lines. There's nothing he could have said to warrant that. There's there's nothing. And I don't know the kid's name, and so I don't feel like I'm calling him out or anything. Like, but what did what did you accomplish? What what did you win by that? And that's what I always tell somebody, you know, that are, that's losing their temper. I'm like, you're going to feel good for like 20 seconds. And then you're going to have to wake up tomorrow and live with what you did. You know, it probably won't even take that long. Because you know me, I've got a temper and, and I'll lose it. And I feel good for about 10 seconds. And then the next day I'm like, Clint, you're just a, you're just a John hunk of poopy. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, I've gotten older. So I've learned, I've learned to control it a little bit, but you know, it reminded me, you know, I had a daughter, I have a daughter named Caitlin with, that had, was a little kid with way too much energy, mm. way too much energy. Okay. So soccer signups happen. We go into your old stomping grounds, a place that you know, very familiar, Hibbit Sports. In not this one, but beautiful Cabot, Arkansas. Mm -hmm. They were doing the, the, the soccer signups there. So I, I walked set up that store. Hmm. And you know how I feel about soccer. I hate it. Yeah, I, I mean. I mean, if I have a choice between watching static and soccer, give me that sweet, sweet static. Black and gray all day. Yeah. Black and gray all day. I ain't got time for no soccer. Soccer's for hippies, foreigners, and little kids with too much energy. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's <laughs> it. Yeah. You know, right there's your sound bite right there. Soccer's for hippies, foreigners, and little kids with too much energy. Done. 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 So, so I had a little kid with too much energy. So I walk in there. It's like, I need to sign this, this thing up for soccer. <laughs> like we need coaches. I'm like, look, I don't know anything about soccer and I hate it. <laughs> like perfect. You're perfect. And <laughs> I, that, I became a, a, a four or five year old soccer coach. And I get it, because them little kids, and my team was terrible, probably because they had me as a coach. Well, um, yeah. and four- and five-year-old, I mean, you know. Well, you know, and, you I, and I'd played college football, so I understood what it was like to organize a practice. I'd seen it done. I'd seen Coach Mullins, who was one of the best coaches in the history of the Gulf South Conference, and one probably the best coach in the history of Arkansas Tech University. Um, I saw him map that practice. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to – get this in periods we're gonna do this for five periods so i had like you know i had five minute periods and like I had watch. yeah i mean it was, it was all mapped out up here what i'd never done was coach a group of five and six year olds because halfway because i was like halfway through that first five minute period and i just took my notes and i threw it away i'm like here's a ball kids go kick it yeah like that that was the you know like you know and then you just try to make sure all the kids get equal playing time but Man, our kid, our kids, our team was terrible, and so like them kids would be driving the ball down the field to score on us, and I'd want to kick the ball. You know, I never did it because you can't do that. That's right. Don't do it because not to be because then I because that kid, that guy, the rest of his life, he's going. That is the guy that tackled the guy running third base. That's it. He's got, and I would have been that guy that kicked the kid's ball. Yeah, <laughs> you know, for the rest yeah. of the rest. Of, yeah, so I'm like, yeah. I'd be showing up to like gotta have some control. Yeah. So yeah, come on. You gotta gotta control yourself. Gotta control yourself. Travis, have you ever had to control your temper like really bad? Um, yeah. Yeah. Is there any is there any harder place to keep your temper than at the airline counter? Like, no. Oh. Yeah, there uh, you know, I'm I'm <sighs> You know me, I'm a patient person. You you're very you you my pay I have zero patience. I'm, I'm a patient patient. person and I'm very sympathetic to people in the service industry. And I'm probably too sympathetic at times, to be honest yeah. with you. And um but yeah, you're yeah, that that that's a place that can get frustrating. But uh anyway, go ahead with what you were gonna say. Get, well, no, no, you're right. I mean, because like at restaurants and stuff, like I, I, I went to eat with Anna this week. It was Friday night. We went out to we went out to dinner. I'm not going to say where. 
but my cousin is the district manager over it. And it was just, it wasn't a good experience. And like, you could tell like the poor, the poor sweetheart away. She was friendly, but she didn't exactly, she wasn't exactly attentive yeah. and she didn't know the, she didn't know anything. She didn't know the menu. Like my wife asked, what's this sauce? She goes, I don't know. I can go ask. And then the guy behind her asked for like the draft menu, which me or you, neither one drink. It is not her cup of tea. But they, he asked for draft menu. She's like, I, I don't know. I can go get it. I, I'll go ask. As I messaged her, I said, look, I don't want to be that guy, but I ate at your restaurant today. Do you want to know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I'm like, you know, like, because if it was me, and, and I've worked in, as, as a manager for most of my life, um, yeah. and so like, I've, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I don't complain a lot, but I was like, look, you probably want to know this is going on. Cause I think they just do this poor thing to the wolves. Uh, but, but now, I, I am the top though. I will like, I'll correct people Yeah, and I'll tell them, Hey, you probably want to think about doing this. Yeah. You know, I, I got to tell people, you, you probably want to think about smiling. It, it'll help you. You'll get more tips, yeah. <laughs> you know? I've had like car hops at Sonic come up to me and it looked like someone just kicked their puppy. And I said, I said, look, honey. Um, and I'm probably being inappropriate by calling him honey, but I said, I'll say, look, you know, if you'll greet me with a smile, I said, I said, look, I'm going to tip you no matter what, but you'd get a better tip if, you know, from most people, I said, I'm going to tip you the same, no matter what. Cause you're bringing me my food. I said, but for most people, you might want to think about smiling. And sometimes they'll be like, I know I, I, I'm sorry. And I'm like, no, you don't got to apologize. I'm just trying to help you out. Cause I want you to make money. <laughs> well, man, man, that, and, and speaking of Sonic, the, in the Sonic app, I don't have to worry about it now. It's the greatest thing to slice bread, man. I just see, I haven't gone to using the app yet. Dude, have, and now me and my wife, when we bought my truck, we sat there and we did our budget and we were like, where's all our money going? And then we discovered how much money we were spending on the Sonic app. And they were like, oh, that's where, that's where <laughs> all our money was going. That's where all their money was going. But uh, go ahead, Travis. Well, uh, I want to touch on uh, Razorback baseball real quick. We're, we're not going to hit, we're not going to talk a lot about it today, but we played. Yeah, eight 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 thinking, are they really not going to talk about Razorback sports at all? Yeah, we're going we're to talk about it a little bit. If you uh, lose the second series in two years, you got to at least bring it up. That's right. AM, it, it wasn't good, Clint. No, we didn't play well, didn't we? Did we, we? And then the same thing you've been saying is plaguing us is plaguing us. That's leaving the ducks on the pond. Listen, here's. Uh, I got this. Uh, let me look this up real quick. Hogs were down ten to eleven to ten. Runners on second and third, no one out. Okay. And our number one, our number two, and our number three batters, Webb, Slavens, and Wallace, come up. We got two in scoring position. We're down by one. We have our number one, our number two, and our number three hitters up to bat. Webb was leading off this weekend. Slavin's at number two, and Wallace was hitting third. All three of those guys struck out. Yeah. All three struck out. And Arkansas, um, you know, our pitcher, uh, Wiggins, started that game. He lasted one out. Yeah, they got shelled. One third of an inning. They got shelled pretty good. And it's funny because I see on social media, and I didn't watch the game. Okay, I, I, I didn't watch it. I listened to part, pieces of it throughout the afternoon. Um, but I kept seeing on Twitter people were complaining about a bad call on the Slavin strikeout. We gave up 11 runs. Yeah. <laughs> One and our three of our best batters, three Clint mm -hmm. of our best batters can't get those ducks off the pond. Now, I, I think we're stating the obvious when we say that can't happen. If you can't do, you can't drive those runners in, you don't deserve to win. 
at least bunt one up, bunt them over, and then, you know, sack fly, sack fly brings, brings one in. You can't strike out. You can't go down on strike. Now, we, me and you, neither one have seen it, but we've heard Kyle Schwerber had a blow up with an umpire. Um, mm -hmm. Now, would you be in favor or against using a robot to call balls and strikes? I'd personally be against it, but I'm just old school. See, and I'm the same way. I'm against it. In that. And, and see, you're so old school, you don't want us to play Arkansas teams, which we ain't got to have that discussion today. And I'm kind of new school, like, who cares? Um, but but when you've got – I mean, it's just like, man, you're taking the human elephant out. I mean, you want to get the call right. And so a robot would get the call right. But yeah. it's like, yeah, I don't – I mean, this – just yeah, no. I'm just no, – just no. People would still find something to complain about. I mean, people would still complain about it, even if even if you, a robot, you know, or machine, you know, there was, you know, GPS deal or however they do that, was yeah. calling it, uh, what the technology would be. They'd be good, uh, oh, accusing the Astros of hacking it, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Any organization would hack well, it's it. It's because they would figure out how. Yeah. <laughs> Them and the dirty Red Sox. You're like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But, um. But no, anyway, and that, and that just, you know, once again, that's the problem uh, that we're going to have. And that's the problem that's going to – look, this is a good team. But I don't see them making it through Omaha if we can't get runners off the base. Well, they're down – they dropped down to number 10. Which, number 10, they're not – I mean, they're hosting a the regional, but they ain't hosting a super regional. That's right. Got to be in the top eight, which – I still think I, – I, I think you're hard-pressed to find seven better teams in the country than us. I uh, agree. I agree, but I, I just think, what, like what we've seen in the past, a team that cannot – does not have clutch hitters does not make it through the Omaha. Yeah. Just can't do it. Uh, no, and it just seems like we haven't come up with that – well, we've come up with hits. We ain't come up with the clutch hits when we need to come up with a lot of – And we've gotten there with pitching, you know, and – if you know well and no one connor nolan was lights out and the day two pitcher of hagan smith he was lights out wiggins had a bad outing yeah. um, it just and I, mean, and I think still you know well our pitching's that's still not bad and it's and it's coming around there's some young arms but another thing in razorback sports clint today the football team got a big commitment for 2023 <laughs> They did. It's always sexy when the quarterback commits. That's right. Malachi Singleton. Uh, yeah. He's a four-star from Georgia. Beat out Georgia for him. Beat out Georgia. Um, UCF was big time. Gus Malzahn was going hard after him. And uh, he he chose Arkansas. Now, uh, you know, Arkansas was after a five – is still after a five-star out of California. It's a little more of a, a little more of a pocket passer than Singleton is. Singleton's more of a he's in the line of a KJ or something. Like I, I've heard I've heard Jalen Hurts is the comparison to him. Yeah, yeah, he's a he's a mobile guy. He's going to move around, dual threat. But um, a lot of good things about him, and you know, most of the recruiting guys are saying, you know, even if you think you're in good with this five star, you cannot pass up a four star. No, Singleton. No, when you've got when you've got a quarterback that you want in the top two or three quarterbacks you want, you take the first one to say yes. That's right. And I think that I mean Arkansas will probably still agree because people don't. The thing is because we just had a decommitment of wide receiver from Texas, and Arkansas was the first one to commit. You know, to offer him big school to offer him, and so he committed to Arkansas. And a lot of the Texas schools came after him after we did. And that didn't change, but when Oklahoma offered him, it changed. I think Oklahoma was his dream school, and so I think the kid's going to wind up at Oklahoma. Um, but but you know you don't because people are still going to be recruiting. Gus hasn't said, "Well, he's committed to Arkansas." Oh well, Gus is still going to be at his house. Gus is still going to go to his school. That's right. Um, I mean that's that's the reality of the situation. So you got to. You got to keep recruiting the other kid and say, "Look, if you commit, I'll sign two of you. And whoever wins the job wins the job." Well, you're gonna—they're gonna sign two with this class anyway. Uh, your numbers are down so low right now. You got to sign two. Well, the last time we signed two was Lucas Coley and Landon 
Rodgers. Yeah. And Landon Rodgers is a tight end and Lucas Culley's at Houston. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, we all have with Lucas Culley. Well, and, and, you know, they may have to go through the portal or whatever, but but our numbers are so low and they're going to need, they're going to need some more just to practice. I mean, they may have to, you know, get a three star or something like that, but yeah. a guy that's more of a project guy that, you know, that put a couple years into in practice and, and maybe bring him around something like that. I guess John Stevens Jones just quietly went and started working for Jerry or something. Yeah, that, or he's probably, I bet he's a, I wouldn't doubt if he's in a GA somewhere or something like right. that. Cause I think he kind of wanted to go into coaching. Um, but you know who knows? I mean, he he can be in the financial world or old world or whatever. He can work whatever he wants. It's not like he's he's going to hurt the Cowboys. Yeah, yeah. Um, then we had uh, a couple guys uh, enter the transfer portal. Dorian Gerald, uh, which he's a guy that he only year he has is a medical red shirt year. This is he, his seventh year out of high school. Yeah. So, really, that's not a huge – I mean, he would have provided some depth for us, but um, I don't think that was a huge loss. I mean, it, you, you, it probably means that some younger guys are going to get some playing time there. So, I don't, I don't think you get too upset about that. And then no, when I, linebacker. Uh, yeah, but, I mean, uh, that linebacker, the writing was on the wall. The three guys that are – the three-man rotation is going to be bumper pool – Sanders and and Paul, that's the three man rotation that's with the true. two linebacker system. I mean, it was you got some other younger guys that I think they like a little bit more, like Avant, I believe. I heard yeah. that he's had a pretty good camp. So um, that that I didn't get that insider information. That's me just doing it off the top of my head because I'm too cheap to pay for any of these sites. Yeah. Um, well, if you you know if you have a membership to Hog Sports, those of you that do, I think there's a there's a good article about. Uh, some guys that that Arkansas has a chance to flip that have committed to some big schools and um, that that was a pretty interesting article. Um, some guys that that Arkansas is still recruiting hard, even though like you were talking about, like UCF will do with with Malachi Singleton, we're still doing that on these other guys. And um, you got to, you got to, you never know when you're going to have a decommit. I mean, until until Penn gets put to paper. And I think it was Danny West that did that article. So if you get a chance to check that out, it was then really good. Send, you put your pen to paper, then you send a facsimile. 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 Yeah. Well, Clint. Uh, spell facsimile. I like facsimile. Can I use it? Can you use it in a sentence? I sent a facsimile. <laughs> facsimile. Did you I'm, ever sorry, very, I'm very loquacious in using big words. <laughs> well clint you know you've been you've been traveling a lot here lately i have been traveling a lot you know and uh one of the things about traveling is sometimes you can get some nightmare stories right yeah for every good for every good story you know like good travel experience there's a bad travel experience yeah i've had i've had a i had a couple doozies uh, well, what's some of those doozies you've had well, I, last time I went to New York, me and Anna went to New York. And the trip out there, just everything got delayed. You know, I just kept having flight delays. But it wasn't just awful. It wasn't just awful. No, going, no, getting home from New York, that, on the other hand, was an adventure. So, first thing, I arrived to catch my 10 a.m. flight. It was around 10 a.m. And I had a connection in Cincinnati. I was going to go from then to Dallas because I could fly because there's three of us that went so much cheaper to fly out of Dallas. Yeah. So we land. So we get to LaGuardia and I watch my flight get delayed and delayed and delayed and mm. delayed mm. and delayed. It's a horrible so flight. I, so I finally walk up to the desk, the counter and talk to the representative from Delta Airlines. Mm. Uh, and so I go, hey, man. Am I going to be able to make any of my connections? They go, um, no. And I go, I said, great. Um, can I ask you a question? Sure. I go, how am I going to get home? <laughs> he goes, well, we got an 8 o'clock flight here or a 6.30 one out of JFK. I said, take me to JFK. 
I said, how can you? I said, can y'all get me a car to JFK? So they, they call me a ride service. And I'd already checked my bag. So I had to go get my bags out of check. Yeah. It already went through TSA at LaGuardia in New York City. Yeah. So, like, so I, I take, you know, and it's, look, I, I will let my, I'll, my wife will pretty much drive anywhere. I don't like driving to big cities, but she'll drive almost anywhere. Um, she won't even drive to New York. That's the one place she's like, I'm not driving here. So um, we'd take, so we, we took a ride service over there. And the guy goes, all right, man, I need that voucher they gave you. I'm like, what voucher? Because they're supposed to give you a voucher for the ride. If you don't have a voucher for the ride, you got to pay for it. Oh. I'm, I'm like, what happened? So I had to pay for the ride. And I think I ended up having, I think I actually, this has been a few years ago. I had to go inside and, and use the ATM. Wow. To get cash out because I didn't I didn't, because who carries cash? Yeah, that's right. I'm having to pay for the ride. I'm like, yeah, so give me that receipt. I'm Delta Airlines is gonna and they eventually did. Delta did great, they made everything right. Yeah. Uh, but this is a horror experience. So I just so I started feeling like Tom Hanks in the terminal is how, oh. is how I felt like. So um the so I get to um so we get up, we finally get over to LaGuardia. I mean, to, to JFK. Um, and that flight, I don't think, takes off to like nine o'clock at night. And like, ends up getting delayed. We land in Dallas in a thunderstorm. Mm. I was supposed to work the next day, by the way. Ugh. I was supposed to land in, in Dallas about noon. Oh, wow. And so, like, I should have had all day in like, I end up about midnight. We were driving home, and it was that kind of rain where you can see about this far in front of your face. I mean, like a foot for those of you that are listening on Spotify and iTunes and whatever, Telemundo, Nickelodeon, whatever. I don't know. So they uh, and so we end up we end up staying at a lovely Motel Six. So I, but I did I I, I said I, but Delta ended up they I think ended up giving me like four gift cards for different things and then mm. they reimbursed me for the hotel room and the ride so yeah their their customer service is top notch but oh man that was one of the worst trips just ever especially with an airline you know we we yeah. did have that one trip with the when i played for the central arkansas rhinos where the uh bus broke down on the way back <laughs> and we ended up having to all stay they put us four in the room oh wow <laughs> I didn't have a toothbrush. It, it, yeah, that one was not fun. But as far as airline stories, that was one of the worst. Well, you but, know, I have I have several uh, airport stories. I know that much mission work as you've done. I figured yeah, you'd I've, have. I've gone on several mission trips. Been to Philippines a couple times. Been to uh, Mexico. Uh, well, I just I, I guess I drove down there twice. I flew down once. Uh, been to Ecuador. Well, how's it like? How's it like for you to go over the Mexican border? How does that work for you? Oh, I love it. Yeah, it's uh, I've, um, Mexico is probably my one of my favorite countries I've been to. Uh, the people there, I mean, of course, of course. Now, when I go to these foreign countries, Clint, I, I'm kind of a, uh, <laughs> I'm kind of like a uh, a walking sideshow. Okay, <laughs> like, Do they call you La Gringo Grande. <laughs> come on, see the fat guy, everybody. <laughs> Hey, hey, look, muy grande, muy grande. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, people, <clears throat> it's hilarious. People, um, um, uh, people, <laughs> and I got tons of stories, but um, probably the, the craziest airline story, um, and I, I can't remember if I've told this on here before, but I'm going to tell it again anyway. I don't think you have. Uh, I was coming back from Ecuador and we were supposed to leave like at 11 at night or midnight, something like that. And, and uh, from, from Quito, Ecuador, okay. Which is the capital city of Ecuador. Well, our plane was had mechanical issues. So they put us up in a hotel. So we go to the airport. They tell us that there's mechanical issues. They put us up in a nice hotel. Okay. So, I, you know, I had a nice place. Was that red roof? No, it was, I don't know what it was. It's some Spanish name. Well, then, and they gave us a great meal at the, at the hotel restaurant there and stuff. And so we went and had that. 
and which at like at midnight, which anyway. So the next morning we had to get there like at eight in the morning. Well, we get there and our plane is delayed some more. Okay, so this it's got mechanical delays and then it goes into a delay because the people that were going to fly our plane, the pilots and, and and flight attendants and all that, were on another plane that was coming in from somewhere else, and the winds were real bad. And they were on a smaller plane, so it wasn't safe for them to land. Because in South America, Clint, they're really, I don't know what they're thinking. Like, if you watch those TV shows about the, the most dangerous airports in the world, they're all in South America. Because they put these things at the top of mountains. Now, when you take off at Little Rock, right, you take off and you're going up and then you hit turbulence, Right. If, like you break through like one little level there and then you go up above that and you you level out right yeah hey, folks if we're gonna hit anything it's gonna be a mountain that's so, right well you're probably not gonna need me in south america they take off in the turbulence okay so you know the winds were crazy and so they it wasn't safe for us to take off anyway well everybody's ticked off now i'm not happy about it but I don't want to take off if it's dangerous to take off. Right, yeah. Okay? But all these people are gathered around the terminal yelling and cursing in English and Spanish. I mean, I know just enough Spanish bad words. I knew what they were saying, and it wasn't good. Because that's the, you know, and, and when you get a new foreign exchange student to your school from, like, <laughs> yeah, German yeah. to from Spain, yeah. Ecuador, yeah. Brazil, yeah. like, hey, how do you say, how do you say this naughty word in yeah, your exactly. language? Like, oh, yeah. we're so funny and clever. Like, the yeah. teachers don't have a clue what we're doing. That's right, yeah. Anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, yeah. yeah. well and you know me, man. I'm And I'm the type, man, I don't, I'm kind of a, you know, I'm sort of a protector. I don't. I don't want. I don't want people like I'm. I was. I seriously almost jumped in there and like started calm down, people. But like there were so many of them, I thought they can take me. <laughs> so, but there was this one guy, this great old big guy. He wasn't as big as me, but he was a big dude. Had a white beard, looked like Santa Claus. Okay, and he was being a jerk, man. He was turning red. He was yelling and cussing at those people. And I, 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 it was everything within me. I wanted to go over there and tell them just to shut up, sit down, and be quiet. Okay. I really wanted to do that. That was the Travis in me. Okay. But then I was like, no, don't get in a fight. You know, don't, you know, don't start anything. So anyway, <clears throat> finally, we go to take off. We're taking off once again from this mountain. High elevation. We're going up, Clint, and the plane just drops. Yeah. I came off of my seat. Okay. When you that's come down, it dropped more. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> like we saw the mountain come close to the wings. Okay. I'm talking bags were falling out of the overhead. People started crying. The, the flight attendants, like anytime we have turbulence, I look at the flight attendants because if they're like, eh, then, okay, this is normal. I looked at the flight attendants and their little jump seats. They were scared to death. They were white faced. Yeah. I'm thinking this ain't good. <laughs> so finally we, we get above that. We level out. They take off the seatbelt line. Remember Santa Claus guy? Yeah. Yeah. He comes walking by and his little baggie's full. <laughs> I just started pointing at him. <laughs> As he walked by, I was a jerk. But he just kind of looked over at me and I was and I and he just kind of shook his head. And then later on, like I have to on planes, I don't fit in the seats very well, as you can imagine. Yeah. So I had to get up and walk around a lot, stretch my legs. And so I always kind of go hang out like where the flight attendants, their little area is, because there's usually places you can stand off to the side or whatever. 
See, because me and you are both the type of guys that we can go and not meet. I mean, not know anybody. We're going to play something like that's that. Right. By the time we get off the plane, we're in a wedding. That's right. We're best <laughs> friends with them. Yeah, that's right. And so, um, so I, I'm just kind of back there, and and I, and I just get back there, and the flight attendants are kind of standing around. They're speaking in Spanish, but they're I'm like, they're you know, and they're like doing all these motions and stuff like that. You know, kind of I can tell they're talking about the turbulence we get. And so I just kind of interjected. I said, so that was bad for y'all too. <laughs> and they're like, oh, that was the worst ever. So anyway, man, and, and you're talking about having to, you know, so we were a whole day late leaving. Yeah. So instead of going into Atlanta, we went into Miami, got to Miami, had to get a hotel at the Miami airport. Thankfully, there was one. We didn't have to leave the airport for. Uh, there was one that right in the airport you could that you could get. Um, we stayed there, and then they had to split us up on two other two different flights the next morning. And one of us, our groups, went to Chicago, and down to. Uh, I'm trying to remember which trip this was. Anyway, it ended up splitting us up and having to, you know. I mean, it was crazy, man, and like the the. One lady that was with us, she was so scared to get back on a plane after that turbulence. Like she was seriously calling her husband and trying to get him to drive to Miami from Camden to go get her. She was so scared. She like B.A. Baracus. Yeah, that's right. But, Man, it's, you know, now one of my favorites too, one of the funniest, I was in, a, you know, I don't sleep very well on a plane because I don't fit. I well don't either. Sleep. So, I'll make up for it in the in the layovers on these mission trips. And I, my big self, man, I'll just use my backpack as a pillow and I'll find a place to lay down. Well, we were in uh, in London, not at uh, the main one in London, but not, the Heathrow. One, not Heathrow, but the other one. Yeah. And uh, we were like right by a busy walkway. And people, like, my group was with me. They were sitting in chairs, and I'm at the end of the chairs, and I'm just laid out. And, man, I'm – and I was so tired. I was snoring. And uh, we were on our way to Sri Lanka, I think. And, I, I man, I was snoring. And they – people were walking by saying, well, that man is asleep. He's snoring. And they were, like, just – Flabbergast that this guy was over. This fat guy was up, passed out on the floor. <laughs> and my friends, instead of you know waking me up saying, "Hey, people are kind of," they're like taking pictures of me and taking pictures of the people going. <laughs> anyway. Well, and I was and let the let the record show was not with you, but I would have been like the your friend. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and and if yeah. I would have if I would have been awake, I'd have done the same. So I had a horrible travel experience recently. Um, no, I got. I was behind Mike Tyson on a plane. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that poor guy. Dude, he's like, he's, I'm like, I don't. Let, I'm like, what were you thinking? Yeah. If you're gonna mess with anybody, don't make it probably the the scariest heavyweight of our time. That's right. Yeah. I mean, I don't. You can't say he's the best. But one of the hardest punchers. But he he might be the scariest. He that's might. Right. No, but I didn't buy the dude's ear off. So, like the next time I traveled after that, the universe goes, you know what, Clint? We're gonna pay you back. Yeah. This one's this one's we're gonna give you one. Yeah. So I'm I'm flying to Little Rock to Houston. I'm doing a jiu-jitsu tournament there. It seems like all I do is jujitsu tournaments because I don't know, I got nothing else to do. Yeah. Um, but so I'm driving to you and my wife dad lives there. So there I'm just gonna work Saturday on drive, I'm gonna fly out to Houston. And meet them there so they've already drove out there and so i've got a friend drive me to the airport and i literally i'm the only thing i have is my headphones and my phone that's all i got to take with me. so i don't have anything checked and so i'm going to get there like cutting it close because i'm usually one of them guys that like to get there about five hours from my flight takes off yeah um that's me so we get there and i'm, I'm like i'm pushing it because we hit traffic and the guy i'm with knew some crazy back way but got me there on time I'm like, I'm going to miss my flight. I'm Because if TSA is busy, then I'm going to miss my flight. I get there and it's me and TSA. That's oh, it. Nice. 
I get TSA, I get there and like the flight's not even half full, but I've only got like 30 minutes at DFW to get, because oh, yeah. of DFW. And so I'm like, well, it could take you 30 minutes, you know, and I overthink everything. I've got so much head trash usually. So I'm like, it's going to take me forever to get it. I mean, it's gonna, I'm going to be pushing it to make, to make my gate. I land in gate B25 and had to go to B24. Oh, nice. <laughs> That, 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 those trips don't happen that often, yeah. No, it doesn't happen. And then, you know, and I got right off the plate. They hopped in the car. Like, they had my bags and everything. And, yeah, that that won't ever happen again. But, um, yeah, they didn't ever. No delays. Just yeah. right through TSA, right around the gate, got on that plane, and went. Yeah. Now, Clint, there's something else we wanted to talk about tonight. And, uh, and that is uh, – there's news out that the Arkansas Travelers may be in trouble. Yeah, you were telling me about this, and I still haven't I haven't researched it. I listened to you, and that was pretty much all I did. Well, from what I understand, and, and this is uh, their uh, Major League Baseball is is trying to get uh, all the minor league parks to up their game up a little bit and to do some. Um, upgrade all the stadium all the um the stadiums where they play okay there are, is it stadiums ballparks all the ballparks where they play yeah and so add some amenities and different things and and just for safety and other things and um i think for the travelers they're talking about it's five million dollars worth of upgrades now dicky stevens park is owned by North Little Rock and the travelers lease it. Okay. So as with anything like that, the debate is North Little Rock doesn't want to pay the 5 million for the upgrades. And the travelers don't want to pay it. And the Seattle Mariners who own the travelers don't want to pay for the upgrades. So there's a real possibility that North Little Rock could be losing the Travelers. Yeah. And that sucks because, I mean, me and you both, we grew up in Arkansas. You played buddy league baseball. You play your little league. I think I was done by the time I got to the little league. I was not a good baseball player. Yeah, me neither. No. But it just – I wish it was because I love – I wish it was because I love baseball. Hmm. But, you know, what? every year, what did they end the season with? Trip to the Travelers. Trip to the travelers. You'd wear your glove out there. You'd hope you'd catch a ball. Right. You know, you get to see guys like Todd Warrell. I remember Todd Warrell, who was the closer for the Cardinals for a while to see him. Well, and back when we were coming up, they were connected with the Cardinals. Right. And that's why I'm a Cardinals fan. That my entire family's Cardinal fans. And that's why and a lot was, of people were... and it was Ray Winterfield. Yeah. So it was right there on I 630. So you drove by it all the time when you went to Little Rock. You know, if you went to Little Rock. You know, like we would go to Little Rock School Shop and go to the mall, right? And go to Park Plaza or University Mall. That was a big trip for us, you know, to go to the mall school shopping. And, of course, we couldn't afford much. But, you know, it was a big thing for us. And we would drive by Ray Winter Field. And, you know, I'd always think, boy, it would be cool to go see a game. And then, you know, then I'd get to go see one every now and then, you know. So it was always there in front of you, you know, because you're always, you know, yeah, by. It, was a, it was a fun evening. And now, you know, it, it still is. I mean, I've been to, yeah, I've been to a few games at Dickie Stevens, you know, they, re, you know, as we, I have a past, as you said, and one of the things that they did was, you know, they would, they'd put on some wrestling. They, now I've wrestled it. I wrestled at Ray Winder twice. Yeah. At Ray Winderfield twice. Yeah, I was one of those. I think you wrestled that one. I stuck up the joint. I can't remember if it was, it was one. It was one. Of, it's maybe the one of the worst wrestling matches I've ever had. And I've wrestled an orange animate doll before, and it was better than that. It was, uh, uh, but it was fun. You know, we got to go. I got to go a few times with y'all. Uh, our our friend Lynn Johnson, the guy that I introduced you to, that trained you in wrestling, and uh -huh. the guy that connected me to it for a little while. Um, he had a, you know, him and some buddies had a ring. And so they would bring in the midget wrestlers and they would borrow or rent Lynn's ring. And so 
I, I went to help set up that ring a few times. And uh, I remember going with y'all and, you know, we would, we would stand there like where the players would come in off of their parking lot and we could watch the game right there. We wouldn't have to go up to the stands. We were down there by the, uh, by the bullpen uh, for the travelers. And uh, that was, that was interesting. Uh, right, yeah. You had to go through the play. And they had that dude, you were going to say, you're going to talk about this guy. So I'm going to, I'm going to save it. Uh, but. They, they had a guy that, that detailed cars. Yeah. He, and I guess he was doing the players. I don't know who's. And you can tell who had the nice signing bonus by how nice the cars were. That's right. And man, would, he, he would do an awesome job. I mean, I, I'd sit there and watch him. He was a working son of a gun, man. He would, during that baseball game, he would do, I don't know how many cars, but he would wash and wax and, and detail the interior. I mean, he was, man, he, and he, he had to be making some money doing that. But now, Clint, I think me and you have probably the same fondest memory at Ray Winterfield. Uh, who were they playing when we went? Uh, oh, uh, they were in the Rockies organization. I can't remember who it was, but I remember the third Wichita baseman. or somebody like that. The third baseman name was Kit Pillow. Kit Pillow, that's right. And he had – he. the first thing I remember is he had uh, – we were sitting on the third baseline and like right, like first row. And uh, he had his socks pulled up like Chipper Jones. Right. And you immediately started saying, <laughs> saying something like, You yeah. want to be like Chipper, don't you? <laughs> and he just kind of, and you know, Clint's great to go to these games with like that because Clint will say anything. Especially back then, back when I had had less sense. And so we're just over there feeding him stuff to say, <laughs> or he would just come up with it. And uh, so he, he starts talking to this guy, and we're kind of talking to him a little bit. But Clint, of course, was was really. And um, I'll never forget he he they played a doubleheader, and he hits a grand slam in the first of the doubleheader. And uh, he, uh, you know, you were like, okay, good hit. That, yeah, what can we say, you know? Well, then he comes around in the second game or later on in that game, I can't remember. And he, uh, like, hit a ground out or something. And he's walking back to the dugout and he's kind of got his head down. And you go, that's okay, Pillow. You got that grand slam earlier. Your teammates still owe you. <laughs> and he just started laughing, man. <laughs> you know it's good when you can get it black. Because me and he, they'd be going like, I'd be like, they would throw a ball. I'd be like, that was a strike, wasn't it? He looked at me going, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, is that called in? <laughs> yeah. yeah. He was <laughs> responding. He was talking back and forth to us the whole time. Yeah. He walked over to us and gave us autographs after the game and was That's like, right. he was like, He's just like, man, please come back tomorrow. This was so much fun. Yeah. Was so I was fun. like, man, we didn't bug you too bad, did we? He goes, no. He said, y'all made it great. He said, I don't mind this. He yeah. said. Uh, well, we weren't being personal. We weren't cussing. We were no. just, it was good, clean. We bugging him, yeah. It was good, clean, you know, just going back. And when you got somebody like that that's not taking it personal. That's right. Just having fun with it. It was so yeah. much fun. And he he got a he got a little taste. Of, you know, we followed him after that a little bit. You know, and, yeah, no, he he had him a cup of coffee in the bigs. He, I mean, he wasn't like a major contributor, but he had him a he had him a cup of coffee. He got to play up in the bigs a little bit. Now, now I told you this on Marco Polo the other day about how you know you see when we were do, we were sending the mar uh, we we're talking about what to do on the podcast, and I was like, man, there was one time I remember because you talked about the mascots in their chain smoking cigarettes. Yeah. Yeah, it, you talk about breaking your heart is when you see that was it a mule, the traveler mule, yeah, or the donkey, something donkey, like something. I don't know. But you see him with his, you know, where we would hang out, he would be away from the audience, and there's like a big wall there, and he would go in, back in there. His dressing room, I guess, was back in there, and the guy, and he's back there with his head off, just chain smoking. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that, that's something out of a movie or something, you know. 
Yeah, I mean, so he walks past me, and these kids are yelling at him, like, Shelly, Shelly. He's like, I hate these freaking kids. <laughs> and he goes, walks up. So later on, he's around two girls, like, dude, you broke my heart when you said you hated these kids. He goes, well, no, I didn't say that. I love these kids. The only reason I'm doing this is for the kids. <laughs> yeah. Like, I feel offensive. I realized, oh, I was just, you know, I made him look bad in front of the girls. <laughs> That's right, yeah. I hate these kids. I'm trying to show off in front of the lady. Yeah, he's like, I'm like okay, I'm sorry, bud. Sorry, he's really a mule with a bad attitude. Yeah, I thought he was. He he was a he he yeah. was just a, he wasn't a good mule. He wasn't a good mule at all. Bad 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 mule. Bad mule. <laughs> but no man, the memories of the travelers, you know. So I hope hopefully you know they get it worked out because it would be a shame for. I mean, there they already there were some people in Little Rock that were salty when they moved over to North Little Rock. But one of the things that I will say, because when they do the mid wrestling, all both dugouts come out and they and they and they watch it. And, you know, one of like the the Ar- Northwest Arkansas Naturals will walk one of the players out from the, the bad guy wrestler and a traveler walk out the good guy wrestler because they all sit up. And I said, guys, and they said, because this was at Ray Winter, he goes, Yeah, this is the worst ballpark in, in the Texas League by far. Yeah. And so it needed it needed to be upgraded or need to be happen and and I, they happened to be the land. Yeah. And Diggy Stevens was an incredible upgrade. I mean, it oh, really yeah. was. And I think, I think even if the Travelers leave, they'll get something else in there. Yeah. You know, whether it's an independent league team or something like that, I, I bet they'll get something else in there. Yeah, I don't think we'll lose the Travelers. We may lose the AA affiliate. Yeah. But, you know, our, you I, mean, know they I wish it was a team that was uh, closer to home that, Mainly, I wish we had a team that we could see on TV. Right. Well, the Cardinals, the Cardinals were the perfect in that, and and I don't know if you remember them. What basically happened was the Cardinals wanted a new stadium, and the Travelers weren't willing to build it. That's right. They had, they basically had a bluffing contest, and the, now uh, you have the Springfield Cardinals in Springfield, Missouri. So, I mean, I don't know. You know, you you got to think. You know. You, 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 there's rumors of them of doing an expansion team in Nashville. You got to think that Little Rock would make a good, a good, yeah, it'd, be a good it'd be a good place for that. Yeah. Cause you got the Memphis Cardinals. Um, so who, who knows? I know that something's going to happen. I don't know what it is. Yeah. That's right. Well, Clint, man, uh, we made it through another one. I think this podcast you could call a smorgasbord. Yeah, Morgansburg. We were all over the. It was like a. It was like a buffet that didn't make any sense. That's right. <laughs> like you got your, you got your sesame chicken, you got your barbecue ribs, and you got just fish. Everything. Fish. Don't we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. We, don't know. we, don't know. we threw. And we threw something together. We saw what stuck. That's right. It's there's a salad bar over here. There's. Cold macaroni salad. You've been to one of them Brazilian buffets, Brazilian steakhouse, where they just bring the skewers wow. of meat. Yeah. They come around with the skewers of meat, and they're like, hey, the salad bar's over there. I'm like, I ain't got time for that. That's right. Bring the meat wagon. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I'll take a salad. Nice bed of meat covered with more meat and with little other things of meat. And then put some sauce on it. <laughs> Well, man, Clint, uh, it was a fun one. Now, it was, uh, it, was. it was a good one. I, I think again, you know our podcast. You can listen to us anywhere, folks. If you're watching on Facebook, I mean on uh, YouTube. Thank you for watching. Want to say hi? A couple of my students have been watching some of them. Want to say hi to JJ Beans, JJ Fuentes, and Ben. Big Ben, Big Ben. Clint, I'm I'm coaching a uh, basketball team again uh, Friday night, and I'm gonna have to try to figure out how to shut those guys down. I found out today who my team's gonna be, and I got to go against Big Ben. He's a he's a pretty good ball player, yeah. And uh, his boy JJ can can Beans condition the ball. Maybe I should come out of retirement guard, old Big Ben. Yeah, I may have to. And I ain't got many trips up and down the court left, so I'm gonna say. Uh, that. I may have to teach a kid a, the the. Ba- they, I don't know. If, I, I don't know, man. I I don't know if I can get teach them the baby hook. You think I could teach them the baby hook? 
Think they're ready for yeah, that? I think you could. You had me and I couldn't stop it. No one can stop the baby hook, baby. No. Especially when you got shoulders as wide as mine. <laughs> I can't rig it. Yeah. I just, like, man, I'd shoot it from, like, over here, you know. I'd reach out as far as I could and just flick my wrist and throw it up there and make it. But um, anyway, uh, yeah, check us out on – hey, we're, we're now – Clint, one more. I got one more to add to the list. We're on, we're on Spotify. We're on Amazon. We're on Google. We're on uh, uh, Apple. We're on uh, – Plus. Yeah, Telemundo, whatever. Okay, we're on yeah. all those. Uh, yeah. Uh, iTunes Radio, iHeart Radio, or Tune In Radio, iHeart Radio. You can find us all those places. Now we're on Samsung. If you have a Samsung phone, there's a there's a Samsung podcast app you can get, and we're on it too, Clint. Oh, I was going to tell you. I meant to tell you this, and and you were yapping. I couldn't get a word in edgewise. Um, no, I can't back that one up. Uh, but I remember because we took. Did I tell this story? I don't think I did. We took a Tesla. Yeah, you told us about that. Okay, I, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, Elon Musk bought Twitter. I don't know. Go That's ahead. right. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Sorry, told the story. I'm just going to shut up now. So you, anyway, you, you take it from here, Travis. I'm, so we're we're on Samsung now. There's an app. There's a podcast app on Samsung. We're on all those places, man. So uh, you can find us anywhere you want to find us, and uh, we'd love for you to share it with other people on social media. Follow us on Instagram, on Twitter. Sometimes we have things to say on there on Facebook. Uh, we're not on TikTok yet. Uh, I don't TikTok. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't quite understand TikTok. I don't get it. It's I'm 45 and I don't get TikTok. Yeah, I don't. I don't. It's not my language. But uh, anyway, check us out. Uh, like and share. Subscribe. All that good stuff. You can go to Podbean. Also, uh, we do have a website. It's Big T, Big C, Bigger T. Uh, podcast.podbean.com okay so that's our website uh, you can check out all the episodes there there's we are missing a couple there uh, that some of the older ones that we didn't get but they're all on the youtube so um, you can get all 59 this is 59 Clint. oh we'll be 60 next week yeah man feeling old yeah well sure. clint man have a great week be awesome. We did it. Wherever you are, be all there. And with that, I'll say peace. Swear. One. Filthy. Dirt. Harvest. Hurt. Kingdom come. That's why I swear when I work, my hands get filthy down in this dirt. Won't see no more till I hurt. Cry in your kingdom, come. Listen, I wake up in the morning, I bow my head to pray. Mama told me.